an increasingly rare sight, not just in Australia, but around the world. No, it's not a bull, but a cow that's been allowed to keep its horns. Now, according to our online survey, 86% of respondents stated that they believe only bulls have horns. And this is not surprising due to the practice of dehorning or polling being widely adopted by conventional farmers and organic farmers around the world, despite many viewing the practice as cruel. Now, the following footage may be distressing to some viewers. I need someone to just hold the hit. The uh, I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it. Oh, still there. All right. Yeah, I I'll come over here. Girl's doing it. You, you, you didn't hurt us. I haven't done one this big. Go ahead. Come here. The New South Wales government website for agriculture recommends the practice and suggests farmers remove the horns while the cows are still young. The reason being that bruised beef costs the industry $20 million a year. They go even further and suggest the breeding of cows so that they don't have any horns at all. Now, despite its widespread acceptance around the world, Swiss Parliament will soon discuss whether cows should keep their horns, after Swiss citizens put forward a draft parliamentary bill that deals with the issue. According to the bill, farmers who allow their animals to keep their horns should be reimbursed one Swiss franc per cow per day. Now, if this went ahead, conventional and many organic farmers would have to stop the practice in order to receive reimbursement, but there is one form of farming that would qualify instantly, and that is biodynamic agriculture. Now, biodynamic farming came into being after a series of eight lectures given by the Austrian spiritual scientist Rudolf Steiner in 1924 which was given in response to the growing concern shared by a large number of farmers about the negative impact chemical fertilizers were having not only on the soil, but on the animals and crops as well. It took just 10 days for Rudolf Steiner to give this new impulse for holistic agriculture, and it's now practiced in over 50 countries around the world, and even has its own certification body, Demeter International. Now, on biodynamic farms, cattle's are not dehorned because the horns are seen as being intrinsic and of vital importance to the cow's inherent nature. Independent studies have shown that the cow's horns don't just look beautiful, they actually play an important role in digestion as well as regulating temperature. In fact, doctors that work near biodynamic farms in Germany have noticed that patients with an intolerance to even organic milk can quite happily tolerate milk from the biodynamic horned cattle. German veterinarian Wilhelm Hoffer is one researcher who took blood, urine and milk samples from both horned and dehorned organic cattle in the Allgäu region in southern Germany and subjected them to spagyrical analysis, a method in which one is able to visualize under the microscope the crystalline structures that can determine life forces and vitality of the sample. Now the resulting comparisons, which are magnified at 40 and 100 times, show a clear difference between the horned and dehorned cattle. The dense, fine crystals with few straight or perpendicular lines, as well as the regular structure from core to the very perimeter, are an indication of health and vitality. Now you can see that the dehorned cow's milk shows much less density on the perimeter and therefore weaker vitality. The straight and perpendicular lines we can see are an indicator of degenerative processes. These same results are present in both the blood and urine samples and demonstrate the importance of the cow's horn as an extension of the digestive system and make clear why they need to keep them. Now to end this report, we have some beautiful footage shot on the Aracaria Biodynamic Farm in Mullumbimby, northern New South Wales, Australia, accompanied by an excerpt of a lecture given by Rudolf Steiner in 1923, in which he talks about the beauty of the process of digestion that we see in the cow. Now, in light of the fact that the horns play such an important role in this process, these words seem more relevant now than they did in 1923. Thank you for joining us on ASM News. My name's Elliot Baring, and we'll see you next time. Good night. I have often spoken of how enchanting it is to contemplate a herd of cattle, replete and satisfied, 
lying down in a meadow. To observe this process of digestion, which here again is expressed in the position of the body, in the expression of the eyes in every moment. Take the opportunity to observe a cow lying in the meadow and its reaction when a noise comes from one direction or another. It is really wonderful to see how the cow raises her head, how in this lifting there lies the feeling that it is all heaviness, that it is not easy for the cow to lift her head as though something very special were within it. When we see a cow in the meadow disturbed in this way, we cannot but say to ourselves, this cow is astonished that she must lift her head for anything but grazing. All this is to be seen in the way the cow lifts her head, but it is not only in the movement of the lifting of the head, it lies also in the form of the head. And if we further observe the animal's whole form, we see it is in fact what I may call an extended digestive system. The weight of the digestion burdens the blood circulation to such a degree that it overwhelms everything to do with the head and breathing. That animal is all digestion. It is infinitely wonderful when looked at spiritually to turn one's gaze upwards to the bird and then look downward upon the cow. And when it is said by ordinary Philistine concepts, indeed by Philistine idealism, that the process of digestion is the most lowly, this must be indicted as untruth when from a higher vantage point, one gazes with spiritual sight at this digestive process in the cow. Things such as these, which so tenaciously retain their position in spiritual cultures, can only be understood when one is aware of the inner connections, when one really knows what tremendous secrets lie in the ruminating animal, the cow.